Greetings, Steph and Julia. Tatiana here, your guide to all things cutting edge. Today we have the remarkable Andrew Parking White joining us as we explore the world of challenging projects and the ever-evolving landscape of consulting. We'll travel back in time as Andrew compares the work tour of consultants from two decades ago to today's dynamic environment. And last but not least, he will share the latest tech innovation in the IoT space that truly captivate his attention. Andrew's goal is to support clients with their revenue growth by helping them to identify and monetize market opportunities. He does this by drawing an extensive experience in telecoms and digital technologies. Most recently, he has focused on IoT and cellular digital verifications. Clients can benefit from his wide-ranging track record with leadership roles in analyst firms and consultancies, including Analysis Mason, Informa, Ovum, and KPMG. What was the most challenging project in your life, in your vast career? I think forecasting projects are always difficult. Um, so I've, I've done quite a lot of forecasting projects for you know, major telcos. I won't mention any names, but you know, for, for one organization, they had a huge multinational tele, uh, telecoms operator and they have businesses in fixed networks, mobile networks, cloud uh, enterprise, etc., and uh, we had to forecast for all of their footprint countries. And I think there were fifteen footprint countries, and there were sixty product groups. So you've got sixty times fifteen countries over five years, and it's a vast amount of information. Working in a consultancy or analyst firm, you, know, you tend to have a specialist in each of those areas. So you, you know, if they want to forecast IoT, for example, you have an IoT specialist. And they give their forecast, but that's only filling one line. Oh, well, five years, one line, and you've got another 59 products or product sets to, to go at. It's always difficult because when you're reporting back, you know, with, with that particular client, you know, we had their 15 countries and we had like 15 country marketing people who know their own markets you know, very, very well. So you're saying, oh, I think it's going to grow by 5%. And they're saying, no, no, it's more like 10% and things like that. And it's constant justification. So you were a person who was coordinating all 15 marketing managers from various countries. Yeah, I mean, we, we were sort of engaging with the sort of central market intelligence wow, unit. Wow, but that's uh, that's such a huge responsibility. How to find this middle ground? How did you manage to go through that project? Yeah, it's a bit kind of, you know, as, as I said, no surprises. So you, you don't just go back and say it's 5%. Uh, you, you kind of document your assumptions on why you're saying that so you can defend them and you take on board feedback. So you, you'll have a kind of interim meeting and, you know, if they think one set of numbers is is not the right trajectory, you know, we can go back and look at it. It's a, it's a kind of interactive interactive process but you no know, th those are some of the most difficult projects and you know it feeds into their their business planning and into their capital expenditure and operational expenditure planning so uh, that was a particularly difficult project and the other ones uh, going back quite a long time now when 3G was very new or to be launched I did a lot of 3G business cases particularly when people were bidding for licenses and you know that those were were very challenging sort of uh, uh, building up a demand model not uh, forecasting traffic in that instance rather than uh, just customer numbers if we can see the times is it easier to do business now or was it easier let's say 20 years ago yes and no it, it's a lot easier being an analyst or consultant now because you know we, we have a lot of lots more easy. available information sources Years ago, when when I first started out, you know, there was no internet. Uh, you, know, you you relied on uh, less sophisticated mechanisms. But what's more difficult is everybody has access to that information now. Uh, so what you might have told somebody twenty years ago is is very different now because that knowledge is is all around. And then you've got you know, things like AI. You can ask how big will the IoT market be in twenty thirty, and it comes back with uh, lots of accurate or inaccurate forecasts of how that might look. It, it just changes and it evolves. And I don't think you notice the changes because they happen so gradually and and you you tend to adapt. But having said that, you know, the, the problems have stayed the same. You know, companies are still asking 
Now, how do I get into this market? How do I build market share? How do I compete more effectively? It's the same questions. It's just kind of different tools and techniques to, to find the answer. And then also the delivery is quite different now. You know, we're talking on Zoom today. I mean, years ago, one of us would have to get on a plane or you know, drive up a motorway to meet face to face. It's called an interview, yes. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I used to spend a lot of time on the road. Um, so I'd, I'd be constantly at the airport, flying to places. I mean, now you can see I'm, I'm working from the comfort of my own home. You know, you can interact with people all over the world very easily. And I think, you know, to some extent, the pandemic has speeded that up because everybody was forced to work from home. So they've developed new sort of working habits. What excites you the most about IoT, about VR, specific technology which you looked at and said, wow. Well, let's stay with IoT because that's that's the one I've been working in for the past uh, six, six years or so. Uh, I, I get excited by any new market or any new technology. Um, sort of like when I, showing my age now, when I started in cellular, um, it was analog and you know, sort of watching things go digital was, was uh-huh. very interesting. And then we've gone through second generation, third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation. And each time uh, it, it it brings a new spin on on what's happening. In terms of IoT, I, I think what, what excites me most is the, the huge differences it can make to a business in terms of how efficiently they can operate uh, and you know some of the real interesting applications you know for around healthcare for example so you now you, you could be on a machine and you have a heart monitor and it's sending information all the time uh, across the the internet and I, I think with IOT you know sort of telecoms was a lot more a lot more simple years ago uh, and now we're with IoT, it goes into so many different aspects. So we talked already about security. So you know, if if you've got a, if you're running a hospital, you've got to make sure that people can hack into those heart machines to stop monitoring your patients. And then it, it also creates vast amounts of data. So the whole analytics side of things uh, is, you know, very very interesting. And what you can learn from that data and uh, how you can kind of reposition your business or shape your your operations because you're understanding more about how the data operates you know think things when, when we sort of see applications such as you know utilities water companies monitoring the reservoirs we're seeing a, a big push in agriculture now and you know sort of some of the real growing sectors around retail where you've got sort of intelligent labels on high value items so you know the, the store knows uh, when it, where it was manufactured how it was delivered when it will arrive how long it was on the shelf and you know lo- lots of in- intelligence coming back and you know I, I think it's those kind of multifaceted aspects and I always like to see technology solving a problem that a business has or helping a business to operate more efficiently you, know, you can look at you now the automotive sector and that's that's a real big user of of iot now and it's it's not only doing all the interesting things that are driver facing but it, it's also monitoring how the engine works and monitoring the the onboard processes communicating with other vehicles etc and um, so that there's you know there's, there's so many different applications and so many different paths. I think the most memorable line from you is that changes happen slowly, they happen slightly, so we don't understand. Because for many people, again, it's all about gaming, it's all about negative connotation of technologies very, very often, but it's actually improving various aspects of our lives. And thank you very much for explaining how it happens. Andrew, we are very grateful for having you here. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead. Thanks a lot for coming. It's been my pleasure. Lovely to speak to you.